If I would just have called this a shaken West Coast IPA, we could just call it a day and have a beautiful shake to glass video, but Okay, it's not as dark as you see it, but I was actually aiming for a New England IPA, but instead I ended up with a beautiful West Coast IPA. So something went clearly wrong. So today is not only a shake to glass with you, we also need to find out what went wrong here. So, with no further ado, let's kick it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and Homebrew. Spoiler alert, this is really good beer actually, even though it's nowhere close to what I was aiming for. I'm gonna start off with the brewing video, and if you want to follow along, the recipe is linked down below in the description on my Buy Me a Beer page. You can go and download it. Of course, it is free of charge, but if you like what I do here and want to support the madness, there's an option there if you want to buy me a beer. Thank you. So let's jump back in time to the doctor and then we'll come back, taste the beer and see if we can sort out what went wrong and go through all the fermentation numbers and that. I actually just finished one brew day because the shaking brew goes really fast. It's here. It's uh, I'm using pre hop DME in this one, making a lager, trying out the Nova lager. Excited about trying that one out. Never used pre hop DME in my entire life. The other batch is a New England IPA. I have some hop samples from Jackie Machine, so I need to use this. And I also have some DME that I need to get rid of. But I want to use some wheat for my New England IPA. I have extra light, 500 grams. I have light DME, 500 grams, and the wheat, 500 grams. Let's start by filling up some water here. It's, my water is a little bit cold now, you can see. It's freezing outside, so this is a really good time to just stay inside and brew the shaking brew. I know I've got a lot of hate for the shaking brew, but it's not a gimmick. I assure you, it makes good beer, and it goes super fast, and it's quite fun. Even though I love all grain, but this is not a bad idea. And it's a really good idea how to get into brewing. It doesn't really have to cost much. You don't even need to do it under pressure, but I'm into pressurized fermentation. For this one, I'm thinking I will be using like one and a half liter. I will be brewing a eight liter batch in a nine liter mini keg. Where's my mini keg? It's right here, sorry. Start this. Is this good content? And you might see that I have two different mini kegs here. I have made a video where I discussed which I prefer for what and so. I will try to link that one below. If you are in the market for a mini keg that is. Or if you just want to watch some more bad content. Tiggy, have you seen my scissor laying around anywhere? Could we use the funnel? It's a beautiful funnel. Did you know that spray malt is the stickiest powder in the whole entire world? I'm just throwing it here, mom. I will pick it up later. Today I'm not using store-bought water. I'm not using boiled water either. Just water from the tap, but we should be fine. Go ahead and leave a nasty comment about that. It's just home brewing. Chill. And if you got excited about that beer or this beer and think that it's a good idea to become a subscriber, ah, better not. My channel sucks and you will only encourage me and Tiggy to put up more content like this one. But of course, thumbs up, like in the video, thank you. And yes, as usual, leave a nasty comment. We're gonna use hops for dry hopping and for uh, flavor and bittering. This is cryo high high alpha hopes. This is a little lower. So I choose this one because I don't want to like measure anything. This is supposed to be simple and easy. So I have this Otsanon brand. Aroma cedar citrus for grassy herbal. But we use this for, for bittering. Am I screaming? Sorry about that. For the dry hope I have Idaho 7 and I have this dry 234CR. I have not yet decided when to dry off. Should we do double dry off just for fun? Yes, let's do that. I have calculated that I will need seven minutes of hot water contact to get the bitterness level I want. The yeast that we're using is Lalavan New England. I'm gonna add some yeast nutrients for this. I'm just winging it, always treat your yeast. The only thing that worries me a little bit here is that I already attached the floating pickup and the hose here and that the heat will loosen it up, so we'll lose it in there. Hopefully we'll be fine. You don't have those problems with that K 
take if you're doing hot shaking brew that is. One and a half liter, zero here to do timer. Clean my funnel also here. Siri, set a timer for 7 minutes. Thank you. So now we need to shake this to dissolve the GME into the hot water and also to get the bittering. You don't need to shake it to get the bittering, but you get it. Ain't no listen up, my dad a little trip to share about it. Can't get some hops, gonna make you stop and stare. Forget the store by thuds, let me show you something new. Just shake it like the doctor and make your own brew. Shake it like the doctor, let the cake combine. All the ingredients, the bitterness will shine. Growing awesome here at home, it's easier than you think. Raise a glass to homemade brews and let it make you wink. It's important when you do recipe, and I have a video on how to do a recipe for the shake and brew, link down below. I'll try to link to everything down below, or just check out my channel. The important thing here is to see that you are getting enough contact time with the hops, not too much, the, the amount you want, to get the bitterness amount you want. Because when I start to add water in here, which we're gonna do in like four minutes, we're gonna stop the bitterness, hop bitterness utilization. Hops are not only used in beers for flavor, they are used for bitterness and also to preserve your beer. Laleman West Coast says that up to 22 degrees Celsius, uh, would I want to go hotter? Should we go hotter? Why not? Because I've brewed with this before and have no issues with it at all. The Nova Lager, I'm starting at 20 degrees Celsius because I've never used that before, but I've used this before at the desired temperature without any issues. I'm gonna push it, so let's say 25 degrees Celsius for this one. Don't forget that we also are fermenting under pressure. To make it fancy, as I have two bags of Try 234 CR blend, and I also have one of Idaho 7, I'm thinking add these now, and then we could top this up at the end of fermentation. Maybe not after fermentation, I like to dry up at the end of fermentation. Two minutes to go. You wanna hear a funny story? When I was a little kid, no, just kidding. Time is almost up. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop timer, thank you. I have sanitizer in this one if you didn't realize that. Also sanitizer in the spray bottle. We have two liters now. Yes, I know I'm still screaming, sorry. Three liters. Four liters. Five liters. Six liters. Seven liters. Eight liters. So one liters only of headspace, but we are fermenting under pressure. Don't need a massive headspace, but it's always a bit scary. Let's shake this up before we add the yeast. This will also, of course, aerate the, the wort. Normally when I brew, I use oxygen. But this is supposed to be an easy method, so I'm doing everything easy. And that's why I will add the first dry hop today. Let's add the, the yeast. Laleman. American West Coast. Full bag. This is not over pitching. And let's also dry hop from the start. I'm working on a video where I'm doing some experiments with dry hopping. I am gonna heat control this fermentation, but I'm not using a fridge. I have this method where I just use a heating mat and a controller. And I have a full video explaining this, and I will try to link to that video below. Some of us don't have the room. I do have a fermentation fridge here, but I have a beer in there all ready. And I also have a beer for my patrons and channel members. I'm gonna share that with you in a BTS video. So big shout out. Tig and I will record a dedicated special episode after this. I will just use a sponge here. This is insulation for the probe. And for this one, I'm using an Inkbird, and also my trusty STC 1000. Both works fine. If you're interested in the Inkbird, also have one over there. I have a review video. I'll try to remember to link to everything down below. And if I forgot to link to anything, just put a nasty comment, right? And I will get back to it. Not that nasty. Come on. This is just normal insulation. The normal type you would put under your wife's knees. Save the planet, we don't waste energy. Little piece here also, which 
to place on the bottom here. And if you are worried, you could also tilt the keg a little bit here. You get an even more head space. At least head height. The space will be the same, but height. Let's set this to 25. I'm preventing under pressure and I will put some gas on here to be able to dial in my spanning valve. Spand it. I have a, a review for this one also. In. Why? This is not good content. <clears throat> what? What the f Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. A few moments later. Okay, so I screwed up big time, but as normal, this is why my channel sucks. I connected the post wrong way. Shit happens when you party naked. Rookie mistake, Piggy. Rookie mistake. Why? I was gonna blame the dog, but yeah, it was me. But we noticed and we're moving on. Let's pretend that didn't happen, Tiggy. Yeah, I will pressurize my cake. Oh. But what was the PRV? No problem. And the reason why I do this, because someone's already writing a nasty comment. Why don't he produce his own pressure? Yes, but I want to be able to dial in my spanning valve. That's why. So simple. Like a glove. I'm just like setting these to around 15 PSI-ish. Because I want to be able to open this up for dry hopping. We have temperature dialed in, we have pressure dialed in. So all we can do now is wait and jump to the dry hop. We're not back with the dry hop because someone forgot to take a gravity reading. Just saying. Not gonna say that it's a brew day from hell because I have had like major screwed up brew days. We have 1065. Doctor, can you write that? Thank you. Let's just um, pretend that that didn't happen. Also, I'm starting to see a pattern here. Now I didn't really need to put any gas on it. It is what it is. Let's try it again. Jump to the dry hop. Day number three. Yes, I have two S's here because I'm double recording here today. Let's concentrate on the, the New England IPA. What I've done, because I, I was a little bit chicken here and I don't want to mess in here. I've re removed the spanning valve and I have released the pressure here a couple of times during like 20 minutes. Because there were some like foaming here coming up. So I feel somehow confident to open this quickly, pour in the hops and close it back up again. Day three, but I started ramping this yesterday, so we're up to 26C now, and I will raise it further after dry hopping. Please have three cameras going if I make a total mess here. Are you ready for Inferno Mayhem? Close it back up. Yes, I know I'm chicken. I think I made it. And this should be Almost done. We have a leakage. Ah, which is just a PRV. Okay, it's tight. Just like me. That went well, Tiki. What do you say? Oh, she doesn't care. I will continue pushing out the temperature for like, maybe two more days or something like that. And then we'll give this a quick cold crash and we we'll try it. Hopefully it will be good. So let's jump to the doctor in the future for the tasting and final evaluation. We're back. What well, uh, mm, beautiful brew day. Let's, let's say that. But Tiggy and I had a good time and I know the doctor referred to a dry hoping experiment and that video is already out. You definitely go and check that one out because I learned a lot from it. Even though I do stupid experiments here on my channel, I do learn a lot and I'm trying to let's share everything with you. Okay, so look at this beer. Do we have a flashlight? Not that kind of flashlight. It's a beautiful colored West Coast IPA with a slight haze on it, a little bit more than a slight maybe. But I was aiming for the color of a New England IPA and this is not it. And of course we need to talk about what makes beer darker because the first thing jumps out of my head when I see if that beer turns out too dark is oxidization. But there's no signs of oxidization in the beer really. Don't get any like oxidization signs on the, on the nose. Slight hint of grassiness. We need to come back to that. 
citrusy. It's not like screaming hops either, and I used a bunch of it as you saw and or read the recipe. Cheers. Great body on this one. Quite a good level of bitterness. It's like grapefruity, almost orangey taste to it with a hint of grassiness. And I'm very sensitive to like grassiness. I can feel also like there is a bigger beer. The original gravity of this beer was 1065. This fermented down to 1017, which ended us with the gravity of 6.3 ish, 6.4 ish, somewhere there. Quick math. And even though it's a little bit grassy, as I said, I'm really sensitive to, to, to that because we all have different sensitivities to, to different tastes and smells. When I first tried this for Patreon and channel members, this was, for me, super grassy. I couldn't find any followers with it, and I know that it's me like being sensitive to grass, which is also, by the way, Tiggy, but Tiggy has a grass pollen thing, and I just don't like grass in beer. Otherwise, I have no problem with grass. I know how that sounds. So I ended up with a beautiful, like a West Coast IPA from such a simple brew day, uh, they were dry hopping also afterwards, but my mind have changed a little bit about dry hopping since the last experiment. I need to like do further experimentations to really start drawing conclusions. Because one time is only one time, but if one time is success, it's actually good data for me. Cheers. Really good West Coast IPA from such a simple brewing method. That is for me mind blowing. And some of you like, try to shave off this shake and brew method like nonsense, but believe me, it's not. I'm all in for all great. If you're new to the shake and brew method, I have a playlist, because I've done this now several times. I have a lot of success with this method, and it's so simple, and it's really good for also beginners. And it doesn't cost that much to get started with this. You, you saw me brewing in the little mini keg. It wasn't that much stuff, really. No fancy brewing system, simple way of controlled fermentation, and you don't really have to do that, but I do recommend try to take control over so much things as you can. So you can try to have the outcome that you are looking for, even though I didn't. So what could make beer dark? Uh, ah, sorry, I'm not Italian. I'm from Sweden, by the way. From where are you watching? So what could make beer darker than you actually want it? A lot of things. Grain bill, of course, one thing. If you wouldn't use the correct, but I used like light DME, extra light DME, and wheat DME. All those are really light in color. So I don't think it was that. And of course, oxidization during the brewing process, especially on the uh, the cold side when doing such amount of hops. But before that, like boiling. If you're having like too rigorous boil. You don't need like a fancy rolling boil to, to get DME out of your beer, a wort, sorry. And if you boil it too long, you get the maillard reaction. And of course, as mentioned earlier, the big factor is oxidization. There's also other things like pH, water chemistry, but that does not make so much darker beer. So I would need your help here. I did add a lot of hops to it. And in some cases that could alter beer color, but Ah, I'm not, I'm not really sure what happened here with the color. That the bitterness got a lot higher than expected. It could have to do with like, like contact time there. I could have messed something up. I did add a bunch of hops and fermented it quite hot. So probably also I got a lot of bitterness from those dry hops, both at the beginning and at the end. But there were a lot of hops going into nine liters of beer. That could probably be the, the main factor here. So it's maybe not the bittering hop addition. The grassiness may have come from the autumn hops. Autumn hops, it read on the pack, it's grassy, but I used it anyways. So it's more, probably my fault. But yeah, you need to help me with the color. You saw the brew day, I'm not sure, but I'm quite sure that it's not oxidization. It's much darker for you as usual. Because for me, it's like a normal West Coast color, if that says anything to you. And when a beer gets oxidized, it gets like gray, brownish, disgusting. And I get like a sweet, jammy taste. For some people talking about cardboard, but I'm thinking chewing down a, a jar of uh, like strawberry jam or something. I don't like it, it gets too sweet. So all in all, I don't have a beautiful New England IPA on tap, so I need to go back. You need a 
Shake and Napa, of course. But we do have now a Shake and West Coast IPA on tap. That is freaking awesome. And if you are into more brewing mistakes, why don't you check out this video? <laughs> I know, I've done a lot. Thank you so much for your support and thanks for watching. Cheers, see you in the next one. Dr. Hansen out.